good morning. It's good to see everyone here this morning. We welcome everybody that's listening in on Facebook and possibly out in the parking lot on the radio. And uh, we're just glad to have y'all with us this morning after a, a, uh, a week last week of snow. Uh, met with the pastor down here and Jerry came down and we did the Facebook Live last week and we did have a visitor actually come in. A lady that was uh, looking for a church, uh, her church right up the road here didn't have services and she didn't know that and so she just drove around till she saw cars and saw a couple of her cars up there and came on in so we're glad to have her with us as well. So uh, the four of us had a good time last week. <laughs> All right, but it is good to see folks back in church, and uh, hopefully after these uh, vaccines take hold, we'll get more and more people in, and uh, we're looking forward to those days. Amen. All right, let's take our hymn books now. Turn to hymn number 660 as we sing together, I Will Serve Thee. Just a few announcements there you'll see in the bulletin. Don't forget the shoebox uh, ministry throughout the year. This month, the toothbrushes, combs, brushes, bar soap, and small compact mirrors. So uh, stick that on your refrigerator as you always do and pick those up as you go out shopping through the month. Uh, also, prayer lists are at both uh, entrances there. And uh, next week, I believe that's next week, isn't it? Or is that two weeks? No, two next weeks. That's next week. week. Uh, there's going to be a, a short business meeting, as we normally do, after church on Sunday. And we'll still try to get you out of here at a decent time. So be prepared for that and stay with us on Sunday for that business meeting. Also, the new mosaics are up here. So uh, ladies, stop by and get your mosaic uh, up here. And there's a uh, couple or three left uh, two or three months back there. So just come help yourself this morning after the service. All right, let's continue on with that good singing hymn number 520. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he goes.
Joe's sign to eat for what else besides that? It's Valentine's Day. Jesus told his disciples, this is my commandment that you love one another. Now, let's put that into practice. You look at someone this morning and you say, I love and appreciate you. See, uh, you already should have heard that from your spouse, or you better have, but uh, anyway, just let that. Look at someone and say, I love and appreciate you. Wake up, Terry, and tell Jim that. <laughs> but anyway, I think it's good. We all need to love one another. If Jesus said that, then we know we need to. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bible to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And we'll start reading in verse 15. And the title of this is Profession Without Possession. Profession Without Possession. Starting in verse 15, Matthew chapter 7. There Jesus was teaching. And this was uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Actually, the last section of it. So we'll start reading that. Verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done, name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And let's pray. Father, we want to take this scripture into our hearts and consider them, Lord, because it's a teaching toward those that maybe don't know you, but also to we that are part of God's family that we can consider all this and know, Lord, that we have to stay the straight and narrow, follow Jesus in every way. But I just pray, Lord, just prick our hearts this morning. Thank you for all that's here this morning, Lord, and I pray your blessing upon this service. For all this we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. I think you could sum up today's message in, in several different ways. First, summarize you could say, good versus evil. We know that Jesus stood for the good, but the devil, he's always around, and he promotes evil. Uh, profession versus confession. Light versus darkness. True Christian versus unbeliever. There's always been false prophets. We have them today, as they did. And Peter warned about them, as they did back then, you have them today. Those that have uh, really not taken seriously what the Lord God has given in his book. But we need to take a strong look at that and ask ourselves a question. Do I really, do I really believe what God has said? Or am I just uh, uh, sitting in a pew, maybe? or trying to do the best I can, can, any, can anyone, without the working of the Holy Spirit in his heart, can anyone do the best they can? Oh, they may show some good works, 
some desires to uh, show others how good we are. But without Jesus, we know that's impossible. It cannot be. But it's all because of what Jesus has done and what he will do. Now, false prophets, and like I say, we've got them today, folks. You don't have to go far to find them. You can turn on the TV many times and you can find that. Let me put it this way. Charles Spurgeon, way back in the 1700s, he was a very strong preacher. He, he did not hold back anything. But here's what he said, and it's concerned the false prophets. They advocate the wide gate an easy way. They water down the truth until there is not enough left to make soup for a sick grasshopper. Now that's watering down the word of God, ain't it? Let's face it, we have to get real. We have to be uh, discerned exactly of what God said against what a false prophet would say. But we believe in God. We believe in Jesus. We believe that that is our only hope in this life and for eternity. So we have to look to him. But they profess, they profess to be speaking for God. But they're coming in sheep's clothing. They may look good. They may be dressed well. They may have a certain amount of good speech. But what's on the inside? The old heart, folks. It says it all. But we cannot follow the falsehood. We have to be discerning. We have to be serious. We have to be looking exactly, asking God, Lord, help me that I might discern the right from wrong. Help me, Lord, to put your word to practice in my heart, seeking your will, your face, in all that I say and do. Help me, oh Lord, I pray. I believe if you pray that prayer, I believe he's right there. He's going to help you. And if you don't know him, he's going to show you the truth. But it's up to you to receive because the word goes out. We preach the word here. We stand firm on what thus saith the Lord, the Bible. We stand firm and we preach nothing else. Not anything about myself being great or any of our people here being great. But it's all because that Jesus was great. And what he did, he paid my sin debt. And yours. He paid for all sin. But we have to trust him. We have to put him first. I tell you what, what the false prophets do. They give in appearance like believers. I mean, they play the part. They act the part. But are they real? No, because I tell you why. They pray. They pray on the immature, the unstable, and the gullible. Here is the giveaway. What Jesus said here now. By their fruits will you know them. They are known by the fruits. Watch the in depth of their hearts and what they believe and what they stand for. Is it give me money? Is it, you know, listen to me? I'll tell you what you need to hear. But what the whole deal is, it is for their good and not for the good of God's people. So we have to look to him, trust in him, pray constantly, and receive from him. We can know how to avoid false teaching now, and that's simple. Embrace the truth that's only found in the word of God that will profit us throughout eternity. I mean, let's face it, there's all kinds of different uh, uh Maybe churches or gatherings of people, they talk pretty words. But what's on the inside? You know, that's, that's like today. You know, we're, we're uh, celebrating Valentine's Day. That's about the heart. It should be about the heart. How does others, how does my spouse see me? No, they know us pretty good. But... Do they know what goes on in their hearts? I think they should. I think that is something that has played out because of what we stand for, what we do, how we approach people and things, spouses and husbands and wives and all of that. 
I think it tells on us. I think it tells on us. Now, how do we embrace the truth? It has to be through the Word of God. I like the scriptures in 2 Timothy chapter 3 of the verse 1. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It comes down from Him. It's not something that we build up in ourselves. We listen. We have pricked ears to hear exactly what God's wanting to say to us. But they are profitable for doctrine, what we believe. Do we listen to people that their doctrines are not in keeping with the word of God? Shun that. Turn from that. But they are given by inspiration. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof. You can take the Bible and reprove yourself. I know what God said, but how am I living? What's my, what's my inner being like? Now, I'm not saying that we don't sin against God at times. We all do. But he gave us a way. Confess our sin, receive his forgiveness. But they are given for instruction, for correction in righteousness and in our lives, how we see things and hear how it's done. 2 Timothy 2.15. You know this, and I'm sure. Study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, we take the Bible and we divide it, we open scriptures, we know this scripture said one thing and it has to uh, connect with the scripture maybe in another place. But the great thing is this, know the word of God. It is your handbook, if you will, for eternity, because it tells you about the God that sent his son to die in my place, in your place, on that old rugged cross. But we have to search and seek. It's like mining for gold. Those gold nuggets are found in this word of God because it's a given. It's given to us to make us the stronger Christian, seeking him, receiving all that God has to give us. And I'm going to tell you, folks, if you search and you seek, God will give you a a mound of wisdom because of what he said in his word. It don't matter what so-and-so believes or what this one over here said. Believe what God said because people can draw you away from God. They can pull you astray. Believe in God. Have communion with God. Pray to God and receive him. You know, I think it's something we all need to hear. God's got something to say to each one of us. He'll speak to us. Charles Stanley writes that heavy. Listen to God. Don't listen to your fellow man as much as you will listen to God because he's got the way. He's got reproof. He's got all that that we need to hear and put in practice. And if we turn that a damn word, damn, where does that leave us? Does it leave us with the rest of the world? Does it leave us following the world? You know, a lot of people have got good advice, but does it go along with what God said? If not, we need to reject it. You know, uh, uh, we just need to trust God. That's the main thing. That's what he wants. Life is short. When you compare life to eternity, it's just a short time. And we're only given so much time on this earth, God's earth, to receive Jesus Christ. If we shun it, we will pay throughout eternity because we have rejected God's best. His son is the best. It's what we need. It's what we believe in, what we stand for. It has to be because man is not going to always tell you the truth. But we have been given time and opportunity to come to Christ. Now I will mention uh, in our prayer time, uh, Steve Cousins. Steve died last week. He's the one to build all this up front stuff here. He did a good job. He died. But just a few months back, Bill was with me here, led that boy to the Lord. He prayed the sinner's prayer to receive Christ. Amen. And that's what we want to, to be about. That's how we be about the Father's business. Is to totally, completely lean on him. 
No, I never did get Steve in church. But at the same time, if he, and he seemed to me like he was so earnest in that. I believe it had been on his heart and his mind. I really do. And he even asked me once, what time's church here on Sundays? And I told him, but he never did make it. But still, I know, look, I can't doubt what God does. If he prayed to receive Christ, who am I to say, oh, I don't think he did. He never did come to church. That's not the deal. The deal is he prayed and asked Jesus to come to his heart and save his soul. Is that not what you did? That's what I did. Because, and I didn't know everything. I mean, I was 10 years old. I didn't know the Bible from cover to cover. Still don't. Still searching and seeking, study. But Brother Steve, I explained to him how to become a Christian. He prayed, and I led him in that prayer, and he prayed that prayer. We praise God for that and thank him for that. But what about the unbeliever? What about those that say, well, you know, I go to church once in a while, or I do this, I do that. That is not what God requires. He requires us to see ourselves as sinners and ask Him to come to our heart and save us from that sin. That's the requirement. It's not doing this, that, and another, but it is doing business with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we don't go that way, we won't be saved. We have to trust him. We have to love and show love for him. And that will spill out to other people. I think people will see that. Jesus living within us. Through our lives. The way we, the way we conduct ourselves in front of people. Do we show that love? That concern? Are we concerned for the soul? Maybe of a family member. Are we concerned for the soul of one you meet on the street? One that needs to know about Jesus. That's the job God has given us to do, every one of us. But the question is, do we do that? I'll be honest with you. I think the most awful words that any individual could ever hear. Depart from me, you workers of me. I never knew. Depart from me. I never knew you. Well, where will that take us? If we hear those words, now that's going to be no doubt at the white throne judgment. Because that is the judgment of the lost. I mean, I'm sure they will make an excuse. Look what I've done, Lord. They wouldn't be at that judgment, white throne judgment, if they had ever asked Jesus to come to their heart. Because we are taken out in the rapture. We are, we are taken before him. And we won't go if we're not Christians. We have to address that whole situation before that time. Because once, once it is said in concrete, it will never change. And that's why we preach and try to show people, do something about it right now. Don't let this get away from you. Deal with this. Trust Jesus and ask him to save you. And he promised he would. What a, a wonderful Savior we really have. He is the judge of all of the earth. He judges all. God gave him that position to judge. He's the righteous judge, the Bible says, of all of the earth. He is the one that will see into us our hearts. He already knows. But he'll see unto us at that point in time of judgment. He'll welcome us into his heaven. Or he will say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. How can he know those that are enemies? He can't, folks. It's got to be that we will give our hearts to him. It's more than pretty words, too. It's not say, yeah, I... I dealt with this, but did we really? I mean, what's that heart like right now? How does he see us inside? Oh, he don't just see the shell. Now, he sees all the way into these spiritual hearts. The hearts of man, they're either lost or they're saved. And he will welcome those in that truly have crossed that path and said, Lord Jesus, 
come into my heart. I know I'm a sinner. I know I have, I have failed. But I want to do something about it. And he pricks that heart. See, he shows that, that soul, that lost soul inside. He shows them, yes, you're lost. But you can do something about it. The opportunity is the moment. Because we do not know if we'll have the next moment. There's no promise of tomorrow. We have to deal with God and Jesus Christ today. That's what he wants. And then he shows illustration in all this by the two houses. The first one, the wise man built his house upon a rock. And all the, the floods came, the rain fell, beat upon that house. And here's the key. Because Jesus was his rock, his strong foundation. That is what he saw. And that house did not fall. It was firm. Oh, how firm a foundation is Jesus Christ, my Lord. He is over it all. He takes, he takes care of us because of his great love and the fact he died for us and we received that forgiveness of sin. See, that's the whole key. People miss that. They think they can sing a song, they can sit in the service, and that's all it takes. But folks, that's not so. It takes a connection. It takes a connection with Jesus Christ that will never be broken apart or removed by any act or anything. You know, since we were all Christians, we've sinned against God, but it don't it can't be a lifestyle. Because a lifestyle of sin proves that we never were Christians. And don't think for a minute that God didn't see that. But now the foolish man, how would we see ourselves fitting in that? Either we're we're a wise man that claims Jesus as Savior, or we're a foolish man. Build a house, our lives, on sand. You know, as studying this, I thought of an illustration. You go down to the beach, we all have done this, walk down the edge of the water, the water's coming in and out. What happens if you stand there long enough, you start feeling yourself kind of sink in that sand? Because it, it washes the sand, the water coming in, washes that sand away from around your feet. You might get down that deep if you stand there long enough. But you get off that edge of that water. You go back up, say, to the pavement or something. What is that? It's solid. And now that's what we're saying about Jesus Christ. He is solid. He's firm. He is the one. To pay for my sin. I can't pay for my own sin. I can't pay for your sin. I can pray for you. I can tell you about Jesus. But I cannot pay for any other man's sin. First of all, I have to be concerned about my own. We have seen several. Even this past year, we've had at least three. And probably Brother Steve there, he was probably, uh, probably in 19. I'd have to look to see, but it's still an all. That's connecting with people in the name of Jesus Christ. So we have to do that. I'm not bragging about myself. I'm saying that our work is to preach the gospel, showing people their need of Jesus, the foolish man. All this came up on him, came on the wise man, the floods, the water, all this. What happened to his house? It broke apart. It failed. Why? Because it did not have that firm foundation. You know who that firm foundation is. It's Jesus Christ. He is the only firm foundation. Folks, this may be our last day on earth. We don't know. But I don't want to say this. I can go toward tomorrow with the thought, Jesus is my foundation. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I already know where I'm going. It's a promise. I was promised that. And he will. But we have to seek him. 
Now, the Christian life has some trials and anguish. Yeah, we know that. Hard times, maybe. Sickness. Whatever comes our way. It's not an easy road. But, if we have Jesus, it's a firm road. Because we know where we're going. We know that it'll turn out for our good. It will. I like the verses that are in the uh, same chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Verse 13 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Now, you go out in the world. You meet people every day. How many of those that you meet go to Walmart, to the grocery store? How many people do you meet in those stores that truly would know Jesus Christ? Now, we're not judges. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying there's a broad road there, and how many is on that broad road? But there's a better way. Look at verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and there is the way which leads into life, and few there be that find it. The question has to come up. Have we found that straight way, that straight path? Did Jesus say in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Pro false prophets shun that. Words that come from others may be sweet words. You shun those for the truth that comes from the Word of God because Straight is that the gate. It's promised. It's given. And it's given to us. It's given to our neighbors if he will accept it. It's given to our family if they will truly come to the truth of receiving or rejecting Jesus Christ. So the question is, what will it be with us? Will we choose Jesus, the solid rock, or the sand that will destroy everything we're about. See, when he mentions about the house there, he's mentioning the life. How have we lived that life? Is our foundation solid? If it's Jesus, it's unshakable. And that's one, that's a wonderful thought. In closing. tell you what, it really touches my heart about the foolish man. We meet them every day. We really do. The gospel has been preached, folks. It has for years and years, many years. But those unsaved, their opportunities to get right with God have been squandered. I'm not saying they don't still have a chance. If they're breathing, they have a chance. But what is their future if they will not receive Jesus? It's that lake of fire, burning forever and ever, place of darkness, place of, of just heat, just terrible. I told you before about talking to a man in the hospital, can't, dying of cancer. I tried to explain to him what hell would be about. He told me he wasn't afraid. It just makes me shake. Because it's real. Hell is real, but so is heaven. Amen. Isn't that something? I'll take heaven. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. This world does not have anything to offer comparable to Jesus Christ. And that is the strongest thing that we need to grab hold of. Hold tightly and live for him and show others what a wonderful God we really have. Now, I'd like to I'd like to give an invitation because this is a strong message. What's in this, this scripture here, it's strong, it's free, it speaks to the heart. It digs in. Or we can just brush it off, push it aside. Oh, you on Facebook. I would just like you to ponder this. Do I know Jesus? 
Is he my solid rock? Have I placed my trust in him? If not, you know what? You have an opportunity today. Maybe not another one, but you have an opportunity today. And I'd like to lead you in a prayer and show you what Jesus wants for your life. So let's pray together. You pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I know I'm lost. I know I'm a sinner because your word just told me that I was. And I want to confess my sin to you. And I ask you to come into my heart and save me from all sin and evil because you promised that you would do just that. So I ask you to save me. And let me go ahead and tell you, if you did that this morning, and it comes from your heart, then you just entered into God's plan of salvation. And you have a promise of heaven forever and ever and ever. Praise God for that. And let's pray together. Father, we praise your holy name. Lord, what a wonderful thing it is to be able to tell other people just what God can and will do for them. But the choice remains with them. So I just pray this morning, Lord, if there was one that prayed that prayer, even here today in the church, or those on Facebook or the radio, I would just ask you, Father, just help them to know what they did and feel that entering in of the Holy Spirit in their heart that will prick that heart for the rest of their life on into eternity. Thank you, Father, and bless that one, I pray. Bless each and every one that's in Jesus' name we pray.